and welcome to Tales of the Resistance. This is the podcast about antimicrobial resistance. I'm Mara Zelt, one of the hosts of the podcast. I'm the project manager with the I Am Responsible Project. And I'm going to be joined today by Amber Patterson. Hey guys, I'm Amber. I'm the multimedia graphics designer for the I Am Responsible Project. And I'm looking forward to talking to the experts and I Am Responsible. Graphic design queen. And what else have you been up to lately? I'm learning about manure sheds. It's the paper that mm, Maho picked out. In lieu of having a book club, here in the Schmidt Lab Research Group, we have a research paper club, sort of. <laughs> we discuss research papers. And this one's on manure sheds. It's a blast. I can't think of anything else I'd rather do with my Fridays. <laughs> Hey now, hey now, we're learning not, well, okay, now I'm, I'm in management voice here. What are we trying to accomplish <laughs> with this task? We're learning the, not just the content of the paper, but about the analysis of the paper, communicating science, to, even if just to each other, you know. If nothing else, it's an insight into everybody else's work since uh, we take turns picking the paper and you can kind of feel like oh I worked next to that person for two years and never learned what they were up to <laughs> that's very true that's a good insight I hadn't thought of well I'm just so insightful all the time <laughs> <laughs> probably won't put this part in the <laughs> podcast <laughs> we need to get focused here moving on all right, well, today we're talking to Divya Gironi from Oklahoma State uh, University. She does research and some teaching on uh, food safety and then trying to get some of those famous E. coli, salmonella, similar foodborne pathogens out of food and keeping them out of food. She's been doing a lot of research lately on biofilms and alternative strategies to mitigate AMR. So we're excited to get in that into this with her. What do you guys think? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, she has a lot of knowledge in this area and I'm excited to see what she's going to share today. Absolutely. Well, we'll go ahead and jump right in. Hi, Divya. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, would you start by sharing with our audience uh, who you are and what you do related to antimicrobial resistance? Uh, okay, so I'm Divya Geroni and I work at Oklahoma State University as an associate professor in food microbiology. And um, uh, my research, I do mostly research. Uh, so my research uh, involves a little bit of antimicrobial resistance in terms of identifying how uh, microorganisms or pathogenic bacteria develop resistance uh, to antimicrobials used in the food processing facilities and also um, on the farm at, at the pre-harvest level in food animals. I... I think you may be the first sort of uh, microbiologist, microbi microbiology mm -hmm. expert that we've had on the in the group so far to oh, talk. Okay. So I imagine you must have heard about antimicrobial resistance pretty early on, since mm -hmm. it's specifically a microbi micro <laughs> microbiological phenomena. How did you yeah. first learn about it, and what was your sort of reaction? Um, okay. Yeah, so so I, I this is this is a very vivid memory <laughs> in my brain. Uh, it was about I would say twenty five years ago when I was uh, doing my PhD um, comps. You know, I was preparing for my questions for uh, my PhD uh, comprehensive exams or qualifying exams, and I got a question from one of my committee members asking me as to what, um, you know, w which antimicrobials or antibiotics is E. coli 01587 resistant to. 
and which one it isn't that could be used it, it to basically kill it. And I, that was the first time I ever heard about antibiotic resistance or antimicrobial resistance um, in my PhD about 20 some years ago. And uh, I did manage to answer that question. Um, the co correct answer was vancomycin, uh, E. coli, the only antibiotic that E. coli 15787 is not resistant to is vancomycin. And so I that's where I first learned about antibiotic resistance. And af after that, I think it, it really intrigued me in terms. And so, I, you know, basically from that point onwards, I um, got really curious about antibiotic resistance and have worked with groups that have worked to uh, develop products for against antibiotic is like uh, alternatives to you know antimicrobials that could be used which would not cause antibiotic resistance in microorganisms has amr ever personally touched your life or the life of someone you've loved but i do remember when i was in uh, louisiana at southern university um, one of my colleagues we were just discussing MRSA and like a week or so later, I find out that her son, uh, son's actually her grandson had passed away. He was like a, a little baby, like I think he was an infant, one year old, and he was in the hospital, very serious. And when we asked, uh, you know, and I asked what, what's going on and he was infected with MRSA, basically. And... Um, um, the little body, I mean, the little kid could not survive that um, MRSA infection in his body. And so that's the that's the one incident I really clearly remember, you know, as to it did have a big impact on me in terms of the, the seriousness of the antibiotic resistance and how these microorganisms can um, affect individuals or, you know, younger kids, uh, you know, health. So to the point that it could be fatal. So yeah, I, I, I clearly remember that still. Yeah. I, I think what we've heard from most folks is, is usually there's a, a clear uh, remembrance or experience mm -hmm. with antimicrobial resistance that's kind of mm -hmm. driven them in this field. So since then, like, what have you felt in terms of the work that you've been doing in antimicrobial resistance and where everyone else is sort of in the field, mm -hmm. are you are you feeling like you're making progress or, or is it kind of going back in the last 20 years? I feel like all of that is like coming back now. Uh, I think for, for a while it was forgotten, uh, the antibiotic resistance problem. It's been there, but I think in the last five, to six years, I think it's become a little bit more of a hot topic. So I think the, the, the biggest thing is to kind of, I think we need to educate the masses, you know, uh, make them aware first, because, you know, unless you, whether it's at, you know, the farmers, the producers, or whether it's the processing plant people, or whether it's the consumers, unless you create an awareness, um, you know, to, uh, show them what antibiotic resistance can do. Uh, nothing else, no, no matter what kind, how much research you do, it's not going to go forward, you know, because um, my, you know, we, we always say that, you know, 100% effectivity in uh, the lab doesn't equal 100% effectivity on the field. So, you know, I think if the the producer or the processor or the consumers are not going to accept any of the research that you are doing in the lab, then it's basically 0% efficiency, you know? So I think the, the awareness part, you know, in terms of creating awareness to, to the people, for the people is, is probably the key. And the, that's the only time that the research will be accepted, you know, or anything that you do as a scientist or in the lab is going to be effective. So that's where I stand in terms of antibiotic resistance. I wonder yeah. if, I, I guess the, what you were talking about before in terms of the importance of outreach and, and then some of those personal experiences is kind of what drew you to the I am responsible team. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could talk about 
how you got involved in that and, and maybe what you're hoping that uh, your involvement with it and what the team can can sort of achieve. Mm -hmm. So I think this is a great uh, step that the team is taking in terms of educating. Uh, I think that was the biggest thing that drew me to it. Um, like I said, because like, you know, I, I truly believe that, you know, awareness and educating people is more important than doing research towards antimicrobial resistance. And so immediately jumped on it. There was no doubt in my mind that, um, you know, the basically in, in outreach and extension portion of it. Um, I really liked that and jumped on, on that uh, idea. And so that's what got me involved with this, uh, with the I Am Responsible team. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it sounds like we have a, a whole career set out for us on uh, no, science yeah. education, science communication. So. Exactly. Thank you so much for thank joining you us. For, thank, yeah, you. thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Bye. Well, what did you think of that interview? I really enjoyed it. Really uh, gained some insights into some areas that I was familiar with, but not to this degree. So it was very helpful. Absolutely. I I don't, I think it's weird because I've been working on AMR for a while that I'm constantly learning new things, but every day I read a new journal article, it just seems like this field is changing so much. Yeah, it was definitely uh, an eye opener. I really enjoyed this episode. Oh yeah, for sure. Well, that's going to be it for today. Talk to you all again soon.